Hello and welcome to season two of Teacher Talk, the podcast for teachers who are lifers but still want to have a life. I'm Jared and as always I'm joined by my partner Johanna. Hey Johanna. Hi Jared. What are we going to talk about today? Sleep. Okay, that's one of my favorite topics. <laughs> you, what do, what you're do you a very know good about sleeper. It? I am a horrible sleeper and I think actually most teachers we are not good sleepers. I think you're projecting. Maybe. I did a random chit chat and I think our problem is, is we think about work too much. It's hard. There's this concept of in, in corporate land or in the world of the difference between a job where you can leave your work at work and a job where you can't leave your work at work and how much nicer it is to have a job where even if it's a, a kind of a unpleasant job, like call center, Yes. Like you get called up and, and complained at and yelled at all day and your reward for being good at it is that it happens more. Uh, yes, I like that you refer to this because this used to be a Jared job, the call center. Yeah, but at least when the when your time is up, you log off the phone and then you go home and then nothing about that work like you don't there's nothing to think about there, there's no reason it like it's just done now you, wait a second i used to waitress and i used to have waitress dreams all the time well, where i waitressed the whole night in my sleep yeah but that's that's a different problem fair that's, enough that's a lack of mindfulness or or something where you're you're allowing worrying about things that already happened to to bother you but yes. Literally speaking, there's nothing about the night after the waitressing or the night before the waitressing that thinking about it can do. Like, right. it's, you are not improving your job at all. You can't prepare for the next day. I think that's part of the problem with teaching. Um, and so when we start teaching, talking teaching, about solutions. Teaching is one that you can't, I mean, you can leave it at home just like you can leave any job or at work. Uh, yeah, leave me at work. I got gotcha. you. Uh, but it's there's the, that temptation not to because you feel like you could be better if you didn't leave it at work. That you would have a better day the next yeah. day. Yes. Or you'd be a better teacher or executive or saying, you know, if you're Johnny, check his emails constantly on his BlackBerry. Yes. Like you're a better person at your job than if you didn't do that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we're going to talk about how you can feel a lot better about teaching just by sleeping more. Or if you're someone who really is feeling frustrated by teaching, is the I just wonder how much are you sleeping and what kind of sleep are you getting? Okay. Okay. So, so what points do you want to address on that? Okay. So the first thing would be sleep more. Sleep Got more. It. Okay. Sleep yep. more. As someone. Well, thank who, you, Johanna. Yeah. <laughs> As someone who this is a real struggle for. Um, there are a couple of things that can help make the sleep better. So number one is you do not do work once you get home. No work at home. No work at home. Because I think what a lot of teachers do, particularly if they have kids, is they maybe they leave work at a good time, but then once the kids are in bed... They go back to work. They go back to work. Or not go-go, but like they get back they, to work. Yes, they're working. And that takes all of anything that they did before then off the plate. And now they have to reset everything. And so even if they only work from, let's say, 8 to 9 or 9.30, well, then it's going to be several hours before your brain's ready to relax enough to go to sleep again. Because teaching is not like a boring job. So once you once you get in that mode, it's hard to... It's hard to be ready for sleep then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're back in your head. You're yes. Yes. Okay. So one once you get home, no work. Okay. This includes no checking your email. No checking email. Yes. Now I will say that in the morning I do check my email at home. Sure. Like once I'm all ready to go for but work. That's the opposite. I mean it doesn't matter if you're getting in your head a little early. You're not wrecking any of your home life or your ability to get to sleep. 
Right. Like, I just find personally that if I go to work and check email, it takes me, like, oh, forever. It takes me, like, a half an hour. But if I check my email first on my phone and I know I need to be into this school, like, in such and such time and I only have 10 minutes, like, I can go through and sort the email and read the email and respond to a couple and then I might have just one left that once I get to work I know I need to deal with. But it's just, for me personally... That's how it works for efficiency's sake, but don't check your email at night. Like, you're, what are you going to do about it? Worry about it all night? Worry that you're going to forget about what you read? Do not check your email. Yeah, to the rest of the world, there's no real difference between you emailing right before bedtime or right after bedtime. Like, no one expects anything to happen between, you know, 6 p.m. and 6 a.m., right? Well, if you create the expectation with parents that you're accessible hmm. that often, then yes, they're going to. Like, you'll have to change the tone, right? Like, it's some teachers will put on the bottom of their email on the little, like, tag or whatever that they'll respond to emails with in 24 hours. Like, you have to kind of create the expectation that you're not going to respond that quickly through email uh, with parents. But if you've already made yourself that accessible, then yeah, at first you are going to receive a little backlash because hmm. they wanted it because they asked you a question. Like, let's say you're teaching secondary and my son or daughter wants to come in early in the morning to do blah, 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 blah. Is that OK? And if you're not getting back to them in time for them to organize, like they might be frustrated, but they can live with it because I bet they're not checking their email and expecting an eight hour response time do you know what I mean like you just have to if that parent's going to be upset by that then let them be upset they just they need to have the expectations adjusted that like you can't call for reservations at a busy restaurant the day of the time that you want it right if it's if that's the thing you want you need to plan a little bit more ahead if you need to ask for time in the morning, it needs to be before the night before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then no one needs to be upset about anything. That's just the time frame that things get scheduled on. Right. But I don't want to create the perception that like a teacher is never going to get negative no, okay. flack. Like they might. And that's okay. Because if you're going to teach for your lifetime, then you need to learn how to sleep. Okay. So no work. Next thing that you need to do is you need to create a routine for yourself where you turn off your technology. Turn off technology. I am also horrible at this one. I'm terrible. Speaking of technology, these new pens are really nice. You Um, like those? Yes. I Uh, got Jared new pens. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You hate technology. So let's hear your, your, your screed. People say there's something to do with the screen. I don't know whether that's true or not, but I... Mean, I does that, like, orange night mode or whatever, or where it takes away the blue light and theoretically it doesn't make you stay up as much? Yeah, I think there is just something to your brain need to be... Your brain needs to be a little bit bored to go to sleep. So, like, if you want to listen to an audiobook, like, I don't think that prevents sleep, but I do think there's... Especially if you've already heard it. Yeah, I do think there's something about the TV screen, the phone screen. I think it sucks you in. You lose track of time. For me, I'm almost to the point where I can't read when I go to... Like, there's just... You gotta... I think you gotta get a little bit bored to go to sleep. And you gotta allow your body to relax. And I think that teachers struggle with that. Because we don't relax very much, like, during the day. Facebook... Google News, television shows, none of these things are designed to, like, attack the way your brain works and hook your interests more than it ought to be. So why <laughs> why wouldn't it be safe to consume when you're trying to shut your brain off? You're making a joke. Look at me. I got it. You yeah, made you a joke. joke. <laughs> but whether it's the blue light or not, it's like reading Facebook. Facebook's designed to make you hooked On clicking more things on Facebook, right? Yes, yeah. And so, I mean, those same hooks are bound to make it harder to 
shut off, right? Yeah, I don't know how the Snapchat works, but the Snapchat. I mean, it's all the is, same. It's just, that's that's an addictive drug. The reason that they're successful is they're designed to capture your attention, and to fall asleep, you need to like let your attention go away. Yes. So, duh, don't do it. Yeah. And you, I'm sure, will have thousands of hours of more of why screens are bad in subsequent or future podcasts. But we've talked a lot about screens. I feel like already. Why? Yeah, but I'm sure there will be many, many more because you hate them. I do. I say that, and I am a teacher who uses technology literally every single day in my classroom. I just, I hate. There are some very negative things that can occur but, with mindless use but of Joanna, technology. But Joanna, I just, I like, it helps me unwind. I get into bed and I just, I lie there and calm down and I click, I read my, my, my Reddit or my Facebook or my Twitter feed. It just, it's, it's a nice little treat for me at the end of the day. Why, why do you want to take that away from me? Okay. Well, it's a nice little treat for me too. Like I, it actually so, helps me get to sleep. I no, it doesn't. I also really like it. I, I also really like wine. Like there's a point at which you gotta cut yourself <laughs> from things. And like so for me, eight thirty on a school day, tech, no more technology. And it'll be hard because I'll think like, ooh, I need to order toilet paper. So I gotta, <laughs> and it like kills me to not pick up my phone and just. Like, just click a couple of things and, and order it. and But I know that I sleep better when I get rid of my technology. Like... An hour before An hour before bedtime. I go to bed. To so try it. You, you won't like if it. you don't believe it. You won't like it. But you know what? It's what you would tell... Like, if you have a kid who's struggling, one of the first things they say is, tell me about how you go to bed. When do you go to bed? And they'll tell you when they go to bed. And then you're like, are you kidding me? You still have your phone with you at 1130 at night? Like, that's your problem. Like, we are comfortable. Like, I'm comfortable telling the people on the podcast. Like, don't do that. That's dumb to have your technology. But then, like, for you to follow the own advice, it's hard. But it, it does. It was different for me. Yeah. Like, I am u- I am unique. <laughs> like, no, I have an adult brain. So it's not as harmed by the... No, we are. You got to stop it. If you're struggling to get to sleep, you got to stop it. Hear me now. Believe me later. Get rid of it. Hour before bedtime. Hour before bedtime. All right. Do you have any other things to target? Okay. So the meditation people are not going to like me on this one. But um, the meditation apps, we really like. What's the one that we use? Uh, Headspace. I use Headspace. No, I like Headspace too. I don't really like it because i think it charges quite a bit but it's it's the one i'm i'm used to now and i I, i'm much happier without it or with it than without it i tried a couple of others and i didn't like them as well don't think this is an endorsement necessarily i do heartily endorse finding a a mindfulness practice that you like but not specifically headspace although it's the one i happen to like i do too it's got the little videos yeah it's it's a great starter. Anywho. Anyway. You don't like the sleep stuff? I love the sleep stuff. Okay. Then I love it. Why are the meditation people not going to like you? Well, because you're not supposed to fall asleep while you're meditating. No, Headspace offers uh, sleep-specific meditations. That's true. I tend to use any one that I'm on. Well, I mean, it, it, if you're tired and you try and meditate for while lying down, I mean... Or even sitting down, you're going to fall asleep sometimes anyway. So, Oh, my God. It's great. Maybe the people. meditation people don't like it, but it's... It's so great. And then the quality of sleep that I have, it's like... I, it's like serenity now, only not in the, like, serenity now level. But it's just, like, so peaceful. Experts can write in and tell us, but, I mean, it seems to me that there's a pretty fine line of difference between letting your attention go for mindfulness letting your attention go for sleepfulness like the experience is pretty similar so no wonder that there's some overlap yeah if you've had a rough day like even if you even if before you leave the school parking lot you just turn on and do a five minute meditation 
Like, oh man, does that make a difference? A huge difference. So why do you think that is? I think the problem that I have is that I cycle experiences. Like, could I have done something different? Is there a way that this could have prevented? What was leading up to the situation? Like, I I want to break it down so that it doesn't happen again whenever I have a really bad day. I want to figure out, like, what could I have controlled? What could I have changed? Um, what could I have done better? What could I have noticed? And And there's value in reflection, but there's not value in, like, that groundhouse day cycling with it. When you replay it in your mind, it makes you feel bad again. Yeah. And then feeling bad causes you to replay it again, and it's... It's a horrible loop. It perpetuates itself. So... Mindfulness helps break that cycle. Yeah. So that you can think about what you want to think about instead of what your body is urging you to feel think about and and you know what's funny is it's literally like i will fight my own brain like part of my brain will be like johanna you're you're a little excited about today you should meditate for five minutes and then there's another part of my brain that's like i don't want to meditate for five minutes well it's just five minutes you should i don't want to do like literally I will fight my own self more than five minutes to do the five minute activity. Like, and I don't know why I put up, like, there's a part of me that just wants to hold on to that negative mojo. Like, I, like, deserve it or something. And if you're, if you're like me, it's just that part of yourself that's, like, logically saying, like, we should meditate. You got to let them win out. And then they also are great for helping you sleep. Okay. Yeah. We should probably do a podcast on meditation. You're the, As the experts you on are, mindfulness meditation. We are not the experts. <laughs> but we are... You can call me we yoga, are poster, Yogi Jared. No, but we're poster children for like the value of it. And then we've had other people in our lives who, again, are not poster children for like exceptional meditation. But then they have also reaped great benefits. For, it's an annoying benefit because it's like not instantaneous Hmm. like yeah i can't claim to be like the world's most together person but if there's a person that improved how together they were between before when they started meditating to after i'd I'd like to meet that person and find out about that improvement like it's been a big help to me wait what did you just say like, I can't claim to be the most, like, with it person with no mental problems oh, right. in the world. But I'm not sure there's someone that's gotten more better. Yes. You have gotten, like, it was incredible what meditation does for you and how quickly I can tell when you're, you've fallen off yeah, your boat. So it, I, I, I'm still sort of skeptical kind of but why i I mean it could have been other factors but it it really seems to have helped a lot i really like it and encourage everyone to try it yes okay so you're gonna meditate um the last thing and i am not a doctor (laughs) (laughs) but um if it's real bad like it's midnight and i'm not asleep yet uh a very small amount of melatonin. Of booze. No. <laughs> no, melatonin will helps me out. I learned about this trick from our doctor who who taught us a, a method for how to use it with our son when he was unsafe and not sleeping at two. And it was like what do we do? Like one milligram for two nights and then you cut it in half to 0.5 milligrams and then you cut it in half again and then by then you're you're you never want to like rely on it completely because melatonin is the thing that your body naturally makes and so they don't have studies on if you keep making melatonin if you keep taking melatonin whether your body will stop making enough to put you to sleep so you don't want to i do know you don't want to rely on it a bunch but I will say. I guess you don't know that. I, what? You don't know. You don't re- want to rely on it. You don't want to rely on it. You're just reasoning. I'm reasoning. That in the lack of evidence. And it seems pretty plausible. You shouldn't like just 
constantly give yourself the externally the thing that you want your body to make. Yes. Less, less the, the body become dependent upon the external. Sort of like, like people who take steroids um, lose the ability to make their own testosterone, right? We oh. know that actually happens. You wouldn't want the same thing to happen with melatonin. There's no studies... On, that I know of. I mean, uh, this was our son's now seven, so this was five years ago. There um, are studies on like individual usage of melatonin, and that it barely helps or doesn't help at all. Oh, really? Yeah, but I don't believe them. I don't believe them either. <laughs> Even if it's placebo, whatever it, it. If that, if that tiny little pill. That's fine. If it's placebo, that is totally fine. In fifteen minutes. And whenever we travel overseas, like, it's it's the thing that lets me instantly get into whatever the time zone is. Anyway. Do I talk about the warm milk? Yes. Okay, this, this so is part I of why we believe in it. No, this was my theory. Okay, so I learned about melatonin. And I started researching melatonin. And I Did found, you know? Did you know that breast milk and any baby milk... From any mammal. Cow milk. Cow milk has a higher level of melatonin in it at, at night. night. So my theory is when they have the same. So what, what's the classic thing for like, oh, you're tired and you can't get to sleep. What you do you do? You should drink warm milk. Well, it doesn't mean heat up your milk. It means go out and get fresh milk. Which would be warm. Which would be warm. Out of the cow. That's where milk comes from, by the way. Uh, yep. Yeah out of the cow and then that would have higher levels of melatonin and then that would cause you to go to sleep anyway that's my theory is where to drink warm milk i like it yeah okay so drink warm milk no go get a cow milk it <laughs> go to sleep then you won't have to take a pill i bet that'll work too or just get the little pill from the this is not a drug thing yeah um, and see for yourself what you think of it it's probably not going to hurt you it might. I don't know. We're not doctors. <laughs> There's reasonable evidence that it's not going to hurt you. Yes. So. But anyway. All right, Jared. I think we're ready. That's oh, it. Oh, we got That's That's my advice for... Because really, it will make you a better teacher if you are getting enough sleep. I mean, thematically, let's just recap um, on the theme, which yeah. is like a lot of the things you talk about. Yes, you could be a better teacher tomorrow if you worry all night about how to do it. No, you won't. No, you could. No. Just for tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, fine. Maybe if for one If you sacrifice your entire night to figure out how tomorrow is going to go, tomorrow you o'clock, might be a better though, teacher. Gonna, no, one o'clock is going to hit and you're going to be a grumpus. Whatever. You take some caffeine, some anti-melatonin. <laughs> okay. In any event, you can sacrifice tonight for tomorrow. But is that going to be sustainable over the course of a, a year, let alone a career? No. It is not. Like, yeah, so, like, your instincts are fine. You want to be a good teacher, but listen to Johanna, because to maximize your good teacherness, you need to be effective over the course of a career. And if you don't sleep well because you're constantly worried about work, then... That's never going to happen. Correct. So how to sleep well. Sleep more. Don't work at home at all. Yes, that don't. Mean, that means no checking email at night. No. That If that is all you get from this podcast is that you are going to make a resolution with yourself that you will not check your email, take it off your phone if you need to. Don't check it. Although you then said in the morning, that's not the same problem as doing it before bed. I check it in the morning, early. but mine doesn't make a little dot. Doesn't make yeah. a little red dot. There's no notification. It never tells me what's in it. Like it, like you can slowly wean yourself back to having it on your phone if you need to, but don't let it notify you that something's there. No. Uh, turn off technology an hour before bedtime. No screens. Yep. No screens. This is probably good advice for everyone. You don't necessarily mean listening to an auto book, audio book or having a, a show on in the background that you're already familiar with. Uh, but watching something new or engaging with social media and things that are just designed to grab your attention. 
uh, no good. Yeah, listening to something I'm not opposed to. Meditate. Yes. Both for sleep, which you can get meditations specifically around falling asleep, or you can just do regular ones. Though if you're tired, you'll probably fall asleep yeah. anyway. Uh, or after work and use the, the power of mindfulness to interdict that cycle where you keep replaying your, your day because of how you felt bad about it. Correct. And then um, not a doctor, but... Not a doctor. Personal success with... with uh, and the old adage of warm milk, melatonin is a, a go-to-sleep pill that if you don't become dependent on, seems to not have any harm to it. Yeah. Um, so if you want to give it a try, then, I don't know, consult your doctor if you really want to. Yeah, you're, you're consult. We should, we should consult your you doctor. You do what you want. They're right there on the... <laughs> There's all sorts of other pills that you're probably buying that I'm sure are way worse for you. But um, anyway, those those are the recaps. Did I recap it all? You recapped it. I like this one. It's very specific things. You like that? Yeah. Okay. I know the things to actually do. What are you going to do? You sleep. See, the problem is, is you're a great sleeper. Yeah. Oh, I wish I was a great sleeper. But my tricks help me. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing them. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you, Jared. Jonna, do you get questions from listeners ever? Yes, we do. How do those listeners send you questions? They send us an email. Where does that email go? Teachertalk for teachers at gmail.com. But wait, what kind of four? How do I do four? All of the fours. They can do a number four. They can write the word F-O-R or they can do F-O-U-R, even though that one doesn't quite make sense. Well, perfect. Teachertalk for teachers at gmail.com. Yes. Thank you, Jonna. Thank you, Jared. Teacher Talk, the podcast for teachers who are lifers but still want to have a life.